All right, welcome back. Um, here in just a minute, I want to talk to you about why all gun leather is not created the same. Uh, first, I would just want to say I'm sorry the content hasn't been flowing. I had some health issues, so if I seem kind of winded, that's why. Um, really hoping the doctors figure it out, but you know, till then, I just press on best I can. Uh, also had some family stuff going on that's still going on, but we're doing all right and we're going to get through everything. So without going too far into that, uh, I will say I do have a lot more of uh, the garage content and more gun content that I'd like to share. And hopefully we can keep pushing this stuff out and have some good conversations in the uh uh, comment section there So let's dive right in a Few years. Well, it's been a, several years now uh, back I bought this Taurus 605 and I bought it because it was an inexpensive 357 snub nose and I wanted you know just a small 357 and the price point and everything on it at the time was right. They've since gone up in price. Um, but in any case, shortly after purchasing that, I did what most people do, and I started searching for a leather holster. Now, I looked on all the, the big players' websites and looked on, you know, Flea Bay and all that stuff. and um, Because it was a less expensive gun you know I didn't want to go spend 150 bucks or 200 bucks or anything on a holster so what I ended up settling on was an Azula holster off of eBay which is this one on the right it's made in South Africa and I just looked today and it looks like they sell for about $50 and you know we're early May of 2022 uh, when I bought the holster it might have cost a little less but it sounds about right at about fifty dollars um, the holster arrived and at the time I didn't know much about leather this I think this was my first leather holster and you know, when I fit the gun to it and everything, it seemed to fit well. It Everything seemed pretty good. So I began carrying it. And it didn't take me long to find out that this one has a terrible, terrible flaw. Um, I'll talk about this one. Then we'll do a quick comparison. And then I'll talk a little more about this. This guy's biggest flaw right here was that when the gun is inserted, and this gun is empty, the ammunition is up here, is there's this leather band that goes around the top of the mouth. And when I got this, I figured this was to hold the mouth open so that the gun would reholster. Well, what I think now is they meant it to be retention. If you'll notice, the bulge for the cylinder is down below this leather band. Now, when this thing is on your belt and the leather is being squeezed together, you cannot get this gun out of the holster. You'll see a wear mark right along this top edge because I had to get in the habit of using my index finger to push the mouth open to get the gun out. Oops, sorry, I'm bumping the camera mount here. Um... So that was the, the major, major flaw in this. The next thing, let's get the gun out of the way. The next thing is going to be the quality. These two holsters have about the same amount of time and wear on them, but they look very, very different. Um, I wore this daily for a couple of months just to see how it would break in, how it would wear, how things would go. And I mean, you can see the printing on the sweat band here, for, or the sweat shield, whatever you want to call it, from the gun. Um, you can see all the scratches and scars and everything because 
I don't baby holsters. Um, if it's outside my waistband and I'm crawling under a car, it's going under there with me. I don't take it off. You know, if I'm going into the woods, if I'm out in the rain, whatever, the holster's going with me. Now, I don't have any issues with all the scratches and stuff like that. You know, that's just a part of it. My issues are with the way the belt loops are all wallowed out. So this thing didn't stay put on the belt. It wanted to walk around. It wanted to, to wiggle. And on top of that, you had to wrestle the gun out of it. So even practicing draws and stuff like that became a major issue. So uh, after a couple of months, I just decided enough was enough. And this thing went in a drawer. Fast forward, uh, late last year I got this one from Craft Holsters and said it's time to give this Taurus a try again. So when this one arrived in the mail, um, I've got some other videos on Craft products where you can see kind of how they're packaged and everything. Uh, it's kind of neat packaging. Um, but when I got it, it didn't look much different than this. Now, like this big scar and all these scuffs and everything are, you know, new to it. And obviously the wear. But we're talking about the same amount of wear as that other holster. And the belt loops are still in really good shape. Um, you know, I mean, the scratches and everything, that's all me. None of that was... There was no damage in shipping or nothing like that. This thing, the finish on it is more of a matte versus the gloss. And I think the matte really helps uh, not show off all of the, the damage as much as the gloss. So, um, you know, it, it, it absorbs those, those daily bumps and everything much better. Uh, both have the open mouth on the bottom. So any debris that falls in has a place to go. It doesn't just sit in a pocket. Um, but uh, I initially, when I got this one, I had a concern that when I put the gun into the holster, that it comes out as easy as it goes in. I mean, it just slips in and out. And I thought that was going to be a problem. And my first instinct was to, you know, head for the laptop and get ready to send an email over. But I said, no, I said, let me try this thing out. So I threaded it onto a belt and put it on. And once it was cinched up on my body, the gun stayed put. I mean, I... Went out and did some running, some jumps, you know, jumping around. Um, I, you know, was out and about. I was crawling under cars. I was, you know, doing the whole nine yards. I wore this thing for the same couple of months as that one over there. And the gun always stayed put. I never, we'll say uh, within a couple of days. I lost all worry about this gun coming out of the holster. It stayed put. And I was very pleased with that. Yet, it always stayed nice and easy to draw also. So, uh, this particular one, um, I didn't have to do any break-in. A lot of the, the leather holsters uh, have a break-in process where you'll wrap the gun in saran wrap or a plastic bag or something like that and let it sit in the holster. I've had to do it with a couple of others, but this one I didn't have to do anything to. It was ready to go right out of the box. So, uh, all in all, I'm very pleased. Uh, like I said, this one come from Craft Holsters, and this is a Falco holster, which... Uh, this come from Slovakia, so it took about a week to get. If I remember correctly, the the cheap one took about that long too. Um, 
another big difference to me in the quality you'll see is this one from uh, Azula is double stitched around the gun and single stitched around the perimeter of the holster. The craft holster is double stitched all the way around both. The, uh, the craft one does not have a sweat band, which when carrying a stainless or a poly guns, I guess not a deal killer, but, uh, and with this particular gun, I didn't have any issues with, uh, with it touching my body or anything like that. So, um, this one worked out really well. I do like using this holster. I like carrying this gun again. So I'm very pleased with this. Um, this one right here. Now that I've got this video done, it doesn't have to go back to the drawer. It needs to go to the garbage can. This one was pretty much a waste of, I'm going to guess at the time I probably paid between 40 and 50 bucks for it. And a little bit more money. Uh, I think right now this one runs about $79. They, um, Kraft does have some less expensive options, I believe. Uh, the 69 range, something like that. But uh, this was the type of holster that I wanted. This was what I was looking for. And being that just, you know, $30 more, I got a much better product. Uh, this one was really a waste. So uh, I'm very happy that Kraft gave me the opportunity to show this off. Um, it's made me want to carry this gun again. So, uh, if you're interested in any of this, uh, craft holster stuff and you want to do a little bit more research from, you know, somebody who's not, you know, an advertiser or anything for anybody, why don't you look up this fellow? His name is, uh, Patriot in the Dark on YouTube. Just look for this logo. And he has a bunch more of the uh, craft products. I've got a couple others I've done on this uh, on craft. I've got one for a, uh, a light bearing holster for a Taurus. I've got a, a shoulder holster for a Glock 19. I've got uh, well, I had a leather holster from them for a Smith and Wesson. 5906 and I actually ended up giving that one away but not because I didn't love it but because I was hopeful it would fit a slightly different model but it didn't but uh, definitely been through seen you know had several craft products through my hands and been very very happy with all of them and Anytime any kind of issue comes up, your customer service has been very responsive. Um, Al has been fantastic. So, um, I'll put some links down in the description for holsters that will fit this gun and this holster in particular. And go check them out. So, appreciate you watching and we'll see you again.